All right. Well, last year I hauled four or five pretty big trees up this trail. Took pretty air all summer because they were down off, way off the trail. And I uh, don't have a skidder or a tractor or anything, so I just used some pulleys and a rope and a winch and got them up to the trail and then used old red to get them up here. So that's what I do. But we'll see how it goes this year. This year, instead of starting with the trees way down towards the bottom of the way over the hill, I'm going to start on this first layer here. So I got a bunch of dead ash trees and some bunch of blowdowns. You can kind of see them out there. And there's a whole herd of blowdowns over there to get. And there's a couple of big trees that the critters are eating the base out of them, so they need to come down. I got some marked, some not. So come spring, I'm going to start here and work my way down to the end down there. It's pretty good ways. And I'll probably get close to a whole year's supply of wood down. That way, when it's too wet to work over the way over the hill, I can work on these because I can pull them up here pretty easy, I hope. All right. As you may or may not be able to tell, you can see the snow down there. That's not even to the bottom of my land yet. Mine's, you know, I go down a long ways. It's down, down, down. Not a, I don't have a lot of flat ground. I got a lot of hilly ground. But there's all kind of dead trees and blowdowns and stuff. And every seems like every spring, I, when we get a storm, I get more blowdowns. So, but you can see down there. So, it takes a lot of work on the side of the hill. Keeps me healthy. So now, what we have here is some woods. Yeah, there's down there, and a lazy dog, and a couple of refrigerators that I'm going to stash in the woods to store gas and oil in it and things like that. Corn for deer season, and there's where I keep my summertime tools and things. I'm going to take that little chest freezer down the bottom of the hill to store stuff in, and I got a few pallets stashed around here, some odds and ends, and some leftover logs I didn't get through last fall, and of course the. Uh, obligatory deer feeder. So, we have the woods. Well, you've seen some woods. Seen it, looked around a little bit. Now all we need is the geezer. That'd be me. I'm going to be the geezer in the woods. Why? Because I am a geezer, and I like being in the woods when the weather's nice. It's nice today. It's, it's in February. It's 58, 55 degrees, but in two days we're supposed to get an ice storm, so it ain't going to last, so I won't be back out here for a while. But at any rate, what do I do in the woods, you say? <clears throat> Mostly I cut wood. I like cutting wood. I got a lot of dead trees. I got a lot of blowdowns. I got a lot of sick trees. I like cutting wood. I uh, got an outdoor wood boiler, as you saw. I heat exclusively with wood. Uh, my wood shed up there holds about 16 cord of wood. I'm going to put. I like to put another addition on it. Get it up another three or four cords in there. I only burn about six or seven a year. Keep the house as warm as I want. So, but I like cutting wood, and I'm going to be stacking some out here this year. I'm trying to get ahead. I'm going to get these ash trees, the ash borer killed a bunch of trees. I want to get them before they rot away, you know, get them cut and split and stacked up. Uh, so that's what I do. I, do. I don't have any fancy equipment. I don't have no skidders, no tractors, nothing like that. I got an old beat up avalanche and a winch on it. And I got a Kawasaki mule and the mule's got a couple of winches on it. And I got some ropes and pulleys and toe straps and hand tools and most of my land's down in the hollers. It's about 800 feet down to the bottom. And uh, when I try and get them up, I just gotta figure it out. That gives me a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Figure it out, get out there and figure out how we're gonna get that tree up the hill. Sometimes it goes easy, most of the time it don't. But it keeps me from sitting on the couch and waiting to expire. So, and then, uh, this year I experimented with uh, put, getting my, make, having an outdoor wood boiler making my hot water. So that's working out pretty good. So I think this summer I'm going to move my hot water heater 
underneath the house and then next winter when the boiler comes on I'll have it make the hot water for summer I'm going to put in a propane tankless water heater for hot water for the summer uh, just uh, get that all off the electric bill and open up the space upstairs and uh, it, that's surprisingly that outdoor boiler make, making plenty of hot water and it's really good yeah, it's, I'm real pleased with it it's worked out much better than I thought like I said, I don't have any big equipment. I don't have no skidders or tractors or nothing. And I only got two really big goals here left for this little piece of heaven. One, I want to get my house completely off-grid. Done with the electric company. 62% of the bill's delivery charges. And I don't see no little guy running up and down the wires dropping off electricity at every house. So I don't know what the deal is on that. But I just want to get off-grid and do it myself. And I use less than 1,000 kilowatts a month every month. So ain't no reason I can't do it. And two, the other thing I think maybe I want to do, or maybe I want to get a sawmill. But gee whiz, the lead time on sawmills, some of them I saw is 18 months now. And most of them's at least a year. So it's just crazy. But lumber prices went out, out of the world last year. I mean, they went stupid crazy. And I don't expect them to come down as fast as they went up and to, to ever be as cheap as it was again. Things never come back down to where they were once they go up. So I'm thinking a sawmill would be good to make my own lumber for around here. Which is one of the reasons I saved this big old walnut log last winter, last fall. I didn't cut it up because I get a sawmill. But you know, I could make my own two befores, my own four befores and stuff, build things. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm really looking into that. But I'm just looking forward to next month. This is February. Next month's March. The weather starts to break. I can get out more. In March, the best part about March is the ramps come in season. They start popping up in the ground. He said, what are ramps? If you live in the Appalachian Hills, Appalachian Hills, you know what ramps are. Not car ramps, but they're spelled the same, R-A-M-P-S. They grow wild. And they're a cross between a garlic and an onion. And ooh, boy, they're good. If they come up in the March, in March sometime, usually around the middle to the end of March. And they're only around for about six weeks, so you got to eat them quick. And they don't keep. You can keep them in the refrigerator for a month after the end of season. If you keep them in water, keep, leave the roots on, keep them in water. But you can't can them, you can't freeze them, there's no way to preserve them. Uh, there just isn't any way that i found, and uh, we've looked, scoured the internet, and nobody else has found any ways to keep them, so you just got to eat them while they're there. And the old timers all wanted them, and ate a lot of them like I do, because they cured all the stuff you got over winter. They took care of all them illnesses you gathered up over winter. And I, they taste good. I love them. I eat them with everything. Sometimes in in March, once they start in April, when I'm having my morning coffee, I'm munching on a ramp. Remember, it's a cross between a garlic and an onion. It goes good with coffee. But if you cut them up and put them in your scrambled eggs, you, your taste buds will think you died and went to heaven. They're uh, they're good with everything. You just put them in everything. And in March, I'm still deep frying a lot. And in winter, I deep fry everything. I, all my food comes out of the deep fryer. But in March, I'm still deep frying because a lot of days it's too cold to light up the outdoor griddle. So when I fix my supper, whatever I'm deep frying, I just throw a couple of ramps in with the, in the deep fryer. 30, 45 seconds, minute tops. They're good, ready to go. <clears throat> so if you live in the hills and you can find some ramps, try them out. If you've never tried them, you will really like them. I guarantee. I didn't think I would, but it shows what I know. I like them. But that's what I do out here. I cut wood, I hang out. Me and the dog come out sometimes. She's getting funny about coming out. Sometimes she just stays at the house. But I come out in the summer when the weather's good. And I pack me a lunch and I come out here and I don't go back. I get out here about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Go back about 2.30, call it a day. And I just stay out here all day and do things. It's nice, it's peaceful, you don't hear nothing, hear critters. We got all the critters here. We got deer and raccoons and possums and squirrels. Squirrels, we got squirrels out the ears, they're everywhere. And we even got a couple of black bears in the area. So we got a little bit of everything. Uh, we got bobcats. I've got at least four or five different bobcats on trail camera pictures. So they're, they're and one's a big one. One looks like about 30, 40 pounds. He's a big boy. Uh, but I haven't run into any critters that are an issue. The bears aren't an issue unless you happen to stumble between a mom and her cub. Black bears run away. 
as soon as I drive out here on this Kawasaki, whatever's out here is gone. So, haven't run into any trespasser issues. I had a neighbor did. We dealt with that. Um, so, in the summer, I cut wood, haul them up here, stack them up, stack them high here. I had them 10, 12 feet high here. And then towards fall, I buck them up and split them. This year I'm going to buck up and split some as I go along. I'm going to pull these up from this first layer here and get them up here. Now when it's too wet to haul up from down below, I can buck up and split or pull some of these up by leaving the truck up here and just throwing the winch over and pulling them up. Because I lost a lot of days last year to weather and I ain't losing them this year. I got too much to do. And then um, I get back, you know, I just... I just, it's hard to explain what's, what's nice about it. Just like today, it's February, it's 55 degrees, which ain't too bad, and it's just nice sitting out here, you know? I should have come out here earlier and just brought us some snacks and a Pepsi and just sit out here and killed some time. And being outdoors is good for your health. You can say what they want. But if you have trouble sleeping and you're a couch potato, that's the problem. Get up off the couch and do something, do anything. Even if it's just walking, you know, I sleep six to ten hours a night, all year round. I just, I don't have any problems sleeping, and I just, when I go to bed, I'm, I'm done. Get up in the morning, sometimes I wake up in six hours, sometimes I wake up for ten hours, whatever. Whatever it is, I feel good when I get up, and then when the weather's good, I get up and have something to eat, drink my coffee, get, get the cools and equipment, get right back out here. So, <clears throat> says, how often will I post a video? Well, now... I don't want to make no promises. Now geezers are. Sometimes we say things and we don't really mean it. Sometimes we mean things, but we don't say them properly. So I would just say that I will try and post a video, at least one video, every week. Will I? I hope. Maybe I won't. I don't know. If it goes better, if I learn, if this video stuff comes to me kind of easy and, it, and I learn and get better and it goes well, maybe I can do more than one a week. If it gets hard, maybe I'll have to do one every 10 days or something. I don't know. I'll let you know when I see how it goes. But for now, I'm going to try and post one every week. I'm going to get this introduction video ready, edit it, and put it up. And then what I think I'll do is go back through the videos I made last year for friends and family and edit some of them up a little bit and post them up so there'll be some stuff up there to look at now until the weather starts to break. So we've got the ice storm coming in two days, so that's going to wipe us out for a week. Probably be on generator for three or four days the way we lose power around here. But I got 60 gallons of that gas out here in my stash, so I can run my generator for probably three weeks. And I got two freezers full of food in the house and enough canned goods to feed a platoon. So I'm good to go. Don't care. I don't have to go to town. Got nowhere to go. So that's it. So I will try and figure all this out. Try and do it right, try and make it fun, try and keep it family friendly, and my goal is I have an account on YouTube and Rumble, both Geezer in the Woods, and I will post, each video I post I will put both places, so if I run afoul of YouTube's rules and regulations, you can watch it on Rumble, so, alright, so until the next time, until I get it figured out, and you can watch or you can not watch. It'll be up to you. Either way, I'll be out here doing what I'm doing. I hope you stick around. Maybe you find it fun. Maybe you won't. Maybe I won't either. I don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll play it by ear. Maybe I can gather, get a gathering of geezers. That'd be good. Geezers would understand me. Youngers might not understand what I say and what I mean and what I do and how I do things, but a geezer will. I bet you. What do you think? Okay. So... We have the woods, you have the geezer, and until next time, see ya.